I want to open this video by saying, warp speed, Mr. Sulu, but I can't quite do William Shatner's voice. <laughs> Let's have some fun with Photoshop warping. With this car, you could see the original logo here, and I've removed the logo from the front. We're going to choose File, Place, and Place in Illustrator File, this belly logo. When I choose Place, the AI format and PDF format are virtually identical if you have the PDF compatible file on when you save the Illustrator file, AI being Illustrator. So it says Place PDF because PDF compatibility is on, and I'll click OK. I'll use my Shift key as I scale this down, letting go of the mouse first, then the Shift key, and I'll move this over top of the car. I'll hit Command Plus or Control Plus to zoom in, and don't worry about the low res preview, that's just because I haven't committed to the placed item yet. As I move to the outside, I'll rotate just a little bit using the gap in the hood of the car to line it up. I'll press Return or Enter to accept the crop, and if I zoom down, this is a lower res image, it will look perfect at 100%. Well, close enough to perfect for our work. Now I want to warp it a bit because you could see there's kind of a bulge here on the hood of this car or the bonnet. I'll choose Edit transform, and you'll notice that warp isn't available. The reason that warp isn't available is because any Illustrator file you place automatically becomes a smart object, so if you wanted to edit it in Illustrator, you could. We don't need to edit this further, so I'm going to choose Layer, Rasterize, Smart Object. And once this is real pixels, I can now choose Edit, Transform, and warp. Even typography has all of these warp controls. In fact, this custom one is pretty wild. I can just pull in any direction to get some manipulation. This is great for label making, but also popping your logo in secret little spots all over an image. Now this looks awful, so let's go to one of the preset warps, like Bulge. If I choose Bulge, this little dial or point at the top of the image will let me pull that in and squish it, or go up a bit and create a bit of a curvature on the logo so it looks like it belongs on the car. When I press Return or Enter to accept it, I could do Undo, Command-Z or Control-Z, Redo, Command-Z or Control-Z. And this bulge did make it a little bit larger, so I'll use Edit Free Transform, and I love the shortcut, which you'll see under the menu, and I'll hold down Shift to keep it proportional. When you move it, move it anywhere from the inside, but not directly on the center. And I'll press Return or Enter, and I'm very happy with the result here. Command-0 or Control-0 will fit in Window. And I could even try some layer blending modes, like Multiply, which makes this look more like it was directly painted on the car. I zoom back in. In normal mode for the layer blending options, you could see the white background that was placed in Illustrator. If I go back to Multiply, it burns in the detail of the car underneath with the logo. So Normal and Multiply. Multiply is a very popular layer style effect, and now it looks like it belongs there. Let's try this with a different object. I've got a champagne bottle, and why not make coffee-flavored champagne? So I will choose File Place again, the same belly logo, and click OK. I'll hold down Shift as I scale this down, letting go of the mouse first, then the Shift key. If you let go of the Shift before the mouse, it may anamorphically scale it or distort the logo. I hit Command Plus or Control Plus to zoom in a few times. I'm holding down Shift again and scaling this down further until it fits below the fleur-de-lis and above the demi-sec. I like to over-enunciate words sometimes. So here, I'm happy with the placement. I'll press Return or Enter. 
I can further move this, but now let's try another warp effect. Again, because this is a smart object, allowing editability of the embedded Illustrator file, it won't let me warp. I don't need editability, so I will choose Layer, Smart Objects, and Rasterize. And now, Edit, Transform, Warp. You could use Arc, Arc Lower, Arc Upper, but I think I like Arch for this one. Just Arch will do, again, a point at the top where I could just make a bit of a curve, kind of looking at the natural perspective in this image. Good. I'll press Return or Enter. I'm still on my Move tool, and I can move that into position. And sometimes I might free transform it with Command T or Control T and make it a little bit wider to make it look as if it's got more natural perspective. Because this is curving around a little bit, it gives me that desired effect. And again, I'll finish this off by choosing the blending mode of Multiply, and it looks like it belongs there. So there you have warping on two different images with a vector Illustrator logo placed in and warped to look like they belong on each of these objects. Try some warping on your own and play with all the different warping effects. There's a flag effect, there's a fish effect, there's a ton of them. Could even give a perspective look by adjusting the horizontal and vertical. And if I wanted to go back and play further, I could choose Edit, Transform, Warp. And for each of these, if I go back to something like Bulge, here you have Bend, Horizontal, and Vertical. But I normally just zoom in and adjust that a bit, press Return or Enter, and if I need to rotate it all, Command T to Free Transform or Control T to Free Transform, and I'm going to undo that because I think it was better to begin with, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So try the warp effect until you're completely happy with the end result, and feel free to experiment with the settings that will show up on the options bar for each one of your warping choices. Have fun!